there can only be one God. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the prophet Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9. And the Lord will become king over all the earth. On that day, the Lord will be one and the name one. This chapter of Zechariah is an apocalyptic vision of the final day of the Lord, which for many and often means a judgment day, a final day where Lord, the Lord's fullness of character is revealed upon the earth. Now, may, let me make that clear. It's not the destruction of the earth. It's not end times prophecies. It's about where all this is leading to. And during a time when the Israelites were exiled, this was the hope to hold on to. And that's what apocalypses are, frankly, is to hold on to your faith in the midst of despair. Hold on in the midst of crisis, in the midst of persecution. Those who are found to be faithful will be truly revealed and God will reconcile the universe. That's an apocalypse in it. It's not about, ooh, God's going to destroy the earth. No, most of the time, uh, what we read as an apocalypse is God coming to earth to reside in it forever. And this is a scene where, of course, he resides in Jerusalem. And, of course, everyone will know. It will be a universal thing. That achievement of God is one. One Lord over all the earth. Now, for some of us, that might sound a bit Lord of the Rings. And no doubt, Tolkien took from spiritual and religious sources to create his wonderful stories. But there is a universal respect of the name of the Lord that will be given. There will be doxologies. Doxologies, you know, are praise songs, are announcements of praise offered by all the foreign kings in the name of the Lord. And God will be king over all the earth, one God and only and what a day that will be, is what Zechariah is saying. Vance Jackson gives us a series of questions about this because it's very simple. If God is Lord, then you are not. If you have a Lord, who is it? And it shouldn't be you. Who is Lord over your life? Who is the king over your heart? Who really is your God? What has your heart? Who perhaps has your heart? Who rules the throne of your heart? What has your heart gripped in its hands? Do you worship your job? Do you worship your family? Do you worship your legacy? Do you worship your net worth? What do you esteem more than God? What do you value more than God? Do you worship your position in life? Do you worship your resources? Do you worship your network? Do you worship your influence? That which has your life, takes your heart, gains your worship, is what truly is, Lord. Too many people run life with a worship trinity of me, myself, and I. And often, even believers do this with a little God on the side. God is not a side job. God never is a side job. God will never respect being anything less than Lord. And if 
God is your Lord, then you are not. When the priorities are set right, and as we've explored in Proverbs, respect of the Lord is the first sign of wisdom present. Lordship belongs to one, and the name is God. Let us pray. God, you reign. Nothing I go through is outside of your control. All power and glory belong to you, and you will be acknowledged by everyone as God one day. Until that day, help me to honor and glorify you with every breath I take. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings to you and yours this day and always. Goodbye.